What's up guys? I got a video request for uh, kind of how jujitsu works slash what to expect slash um, some people have taken jujitsu classes in the past. I've talked to multiple of them and they've never done it before and they just like got thrown into the wolves with it and uh, maybe they showed up for a class and then most gyms have like a schedule where they go through like half guard or close guard or whatever and they just like jumped into a random day and now they're on like De La Hiva which that means nothing to regular people that don't do uh, jujitsu. So got a little request on like kind of how jujitsu works slash um, what to expect. So uh, first off I want to give credit where credit's due. Um, I'm stealing this 100% from John Danaher. I'm just going to change it at the end a little bit specifically for like how to expect for your first couple classes but if you want to look it up uh the john danaher lex friedman podcast there's a snippet of john danaher t saying exactly what i'm about to say so i'm stealing this part from him but uh if you take a super strong person right like a bodybuilder or whoever a really strong person like ronnie coleman or something and uh you gave him some imaginary power number and his power number like dragon ball z is uh a thousand um and one of his arms is a hundred alone, like the arm itself is alone at a hundred. Uh, and then you took like a, an average person and their body is 500, right? Uh, their overall power is 500. And then you take, you know, both of their legs together and that's 200 of their 500, right? So jujitsu is about isolating limbs on another person, um, whether that's positionally or submission wise. So whether I have you in closed guard where my legs are wrapped around your waist. So technically my legs and my arms are versus just your arms. Same thing with mount. If I am able to sweep you over and now I'm on top and my knees are in your armpits. Now both of my legs and both of my arms are against just your arms and your neck. So isolating limbs is like the name of the game in jiu-jitsu. And now if we take someone like Ronnie Coleman who has, you know, a 100 power arm, and then you take an average person who has a, you know, 200 power combination of both of their legs, and then you take something like a triangle choke, for example, where I have one leg over the neck and one leg under the arm, where the legs are enclosed between the two, now we have just his 100 power arm versus the 200 powers of the legs. Now there's a lot of finite details in terms of finishing and defending triangle chokes, but the basic principle is that I isolated or whoever isolated the neck and the head and the arm alone, right? That's why rear naked strangles are so strong um, is because if you can get it locked in, right? Boom, you got it locked in. It's just their neck that's there. Now their arms are gonna be trying to defend it but once it's like fully locked in, um, you can only last uh, so long. Um, and then you have things like arm bars where you're in mount especially, and you slide up to high mount and then S mount, and then the person's two arms are between your two legs. And then you also have your arms there helping out and then gravity. So now you, the next battle is breaking the grip so you can fall back on the arm bar. But in theory, you're isolating the arm with your legs again, and that's the 200 versus the 100. Um, so overall, it's, it's, it's limb isolation and control. And then when you look at entering a new class or starting jujitsu, um, you're going to be seeing going into class and then seeing a bunch of warm ups being done, like forward rolling and shrimping and all these things that are common movements that you do in jujitsu. Um, to get your legs back in front of you. Like if you're shrimping, it's cause someone either like passed your guard or they like ran around and now they're in neon belly or they're in mount and you do a big shrimp to get your legs back in front of you. Cause now you have that 200 in front of you again that you can use to push on them and keep them at bay and keep them away. Or you can use it to sweep or submit them or whatever that may be. But overall, if you're just starting jujitsu, the very basics is, um, you're trying to get past people's legs if you're on top and if you're on bottom, you're trying to keep people at bay with your legs. That's where all these fancy guards come from like De La Hiva and X and K guard and all these, all these different guards that people have come up with over the years. Um, Jiu-Jitsu is 
forever evolving, but it always encompasses those same principles of using, especially your legs, which are some of the strongest parts of your body, um, to isolate either one of their legs or arms or their head or whatever it may be, but using your legs to uh, help isolate limbs. There's obviously things like Americanos where it's, it's just two of your arms and it's one of your opponents. So it's not just the legs, but the legs is a big part of it. Getting past the legs, now you're past guard, now you're inside control. Now you step over and you get your knees in the armpits, now you're in mount. Now you, um, they turn on their side or they turn belly down and now you have your hooks of your heels inside their thighs, now you're on the back. And all of those are positional holds and the next step of that is to isolate a limb with any of your extremities. So when you're going into a class for the first time, the thing that you should expect will be uh, a random warm up, right? Whatever that may be. And then some type of technique, usually it's along a schedule. So some technique that's being taught, whether it's a you know pass, sweep, submission, takedown, that will lead to one of those things, some type of control over the other person where you're past their legs, or some type of sweep or control where you're using your legs to help get somebody over, or some type of submission on top where you're just isolating limbs. So that's kind of the generic base of jiu-jitsu. Uh, again, another shout out, John Danaher, um, philosopher and awesome, one of the best jiu-jitsu instructors that's ever lived. John Danaher podcast with Lex Friedman, he talks about this, and they have a couple um, I believe it's in his first or second one that he does with Lex, but he talks about that exact thing in a, in a much better way than I do. But those are the things that you should be expecting if you are looking to start jujitsu or if you just need a better grasp of how jujitsu works. Until next time, guys, let's get it.